That brings me around to the point I want to talk about tonight, and it's 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 for anyone who has a drone and lives in Scotland, or anyone who wants to come to Scotland or is coming to Scotland with a drone and is not 100% sure of where can you be fly, what are the drone laws, are they different, what do I do? I'm going to tell you now and I'm going to show you. I'm going to keep it simple and I must first of all say that I am not a lawyer, right? But what I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you the law and I'm going to show you how it applies to you. And I'm talking about sub 250 gram drones here, all right? All right? Uh, the, 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 legisl the, the, the CAA drone regulations are slightly different, as you know, for anything about, but we're talking about 250 sub, sub 250 gram drones here. Right. I'm going to start this off by showing you this here. This is a place that I will be going to very soon, and it's called Bothwell Castle, right? Now, this is the Google Google Maps view of Bothwell Castle. There's the wee car park, right? And you can drive to Bothwell Castle, and there's the castle there. But I want to show you this. If I zoom in on that, you can see that there. See that? No drones. There's a sign there that says no drones. Now, this is something that you might encounter quite often in Scotland. There are places that have these signs up. Glenfinnan Estate is probably one of the most famous that's got a no drone sign with a drone that's been shot. It looks like a shotgun and pinned to the top of a, a, a crucifix. It's been crucified. <laughs> Okay, so you'll see these signs. They have one at the Wallace Monument as well. No drones. And they're starting to pop up everywhere. I want to tell you what the law is on that, right? The law is quite different in Scotland than it is anywhere else in the rest of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, right? And we have specific laws that pertain to us, that allow us certain freedoms that you other people don't have. And I'm going to show you some of these just now. So, so first of all, there was a fella sent... I'm going to show it's click over to my screen and listen in. Right, uh, there was a fella who wanted to know. This is Bothwell Castle, the same, the same castle there, right? The same castle from obviously a drone shot, right? So there was a fella who did an FOI, Freedom of Information Act, and he wanted to know. That's Bothwell Castle, right? The one I just showed you. He wanted to know what what is your what is your uh, legal legal position on why can't we fly? So there was a freedom of information request went in, right? On to Historic Environment Scotland's claims regarding their power to restrict airspace under, they cite, the Ancient Monuments and Archaeological Areas Act 1979, specifically in relation to drone flights over properties they care for. Right, so let, let me bring you back for a second. So that's why uh, his, historic environment Scotland have a lot of sites that they take care of that say you can't fly over drones because we have special dispensation laws that prevent you from doing it and one of the laws that they cited one of the laws that they cite is this uh, this Ancient Monuments and Archaeological Areas Act 1979, right? So the requester, me, the fella that wrote this article here, right? He said, well, I'm going to find out. So he put, a, he put a freedom of information request in, asking for any legal advice obtained by Historic Environment Scotland on their ability to create airspace restrictions, right? The specific subsection of, of Section 19 of the 79 Act, right, that they use... And he asked all of the details, right? They responded and did not provide specific legal backing from Section 19 for the drone policy, indicating this section does not grant them the power to restrict airspace, right? They're sneaky. What it actually does is, it's HES suggested the policy is designed to help them meet the legal obligations under health and safety legislation to ensure visitor safety and protect historic sites, right? So... It does not directly grant HES the power to restrict airspace either. So, you can read... I'll let, wait, let, let me link that. I'll, I'll co copy that as well. And I'll paste it in here. So you can go to that and you can read that later on if you want. You can read that all the way through. If I can find my cursor. Right. So here's the link to that. You can go and have a look at that later on. No, don't do it now. Stay with me. <laughs> 
and you can see that when they put their no dr drone sign up, and this is historic in Vance, Scotland, it's castles, it's sites, historic sites all over Scotland, and they pop up the, these the Wallace Monument, they pop up these 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 signs, and they say it's this ancient monuments act 1979, we can restrict it. Turns out they can't, right? That is only, it's a health and safety uh, policy that they have to adhere to, to, to uh, for the safety of their visitors, but that doesn't include them restricting the airspace. They try to kiddy on that it is. Okay, so there's that. So first of all, that, sh that, that proves straight away that those no drone signs don't mean anything, right? So the second thing is, and this is the, the, the bigger one and the, 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 the more important one that gives you gives us the freedoms. All right, I've, I've gone back to there. Let me see if I can go back to part one. Just let me get this all set. I had it all set up earlier, but I was reading through it again. Right, I'm going to be showing you now the, the the Land Reform Scotland Act 2003. And the Land Reform Scotland Act 2003 gives, I'll show you in a minute, it gives access rights to everyone in Scotland. I'll flick over now and I'll go through it. What's the time? 25 past. Right, I've got time. I'll go through this slowly because you, you need to get you need to get this right. You need to understand that I'm you know I'm not just a lot of people say there's no trespass law in Scotland, and yes, there is, and it doesn't apply to us, blah, 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 you do it like that. You have to be specific and know exactly what the, the Act says and how it pertains to you, and you have to know all of the subsections. You don't have to know them, but you have to understand that they are there for you and what, what, what they all mean. So I'm going, to take you, I'm going to take you through it step by step and show you how, you, in Scotland, you can fly a drone pretty much anywhere. There are a few, a few restrictions which I will show you too. Things like schools, fly no flight restriction zones, obviously. Uh, places like schools, uh, gardens, and you ca you can't go into gardens. You can't go into properties, things like that. But I'm going to go through and show show you all that step by step. So bear with me. Right. So the first thing here is. This is the Land Reform Act Scotland. That Land Reform Scotland Act 2003. Once again, I will link this in the chat, and you can go and have a look at it if you're coming to Scotland or if you live in Scotland. This is this is what you want to be referring to whenever you, you you're you're not just flying your drone, but whenever you want to go somewhere and you're not sure if you're allowed to go because you pretty much are, right? So it tells you here that this is this is part one. Access right everyone, that means everyone in Scotland, whether you live in Scotland or whether you're visiting Scotland, everyone in Scotland has a statutory rights established in this part of the Act, right? Everyone. And those rights are the right to be now bless it is word for word, the right to be for the, any of the purposes set out in subsection 3 below, and we'll get into them in a minute, on land and the right to cross land. But we're going to talk about the right to be on the land, not crossing it, because if you're, if you're flying a drone, you're going to be on the land and not crossing it, right? So the right set out in subsection 2A above the may be exercised only. So if you want to be on the land for, any, for a purpose, here are the purposes. Recreation purposes, straight away, flying a drone recreationally, there you go, that's it. We don't even need to go, I'm going to go further, but we don't need to, you're covered there straight away, right? You may, the, the above may be exercised only for recreational purposes, right? Also, for the purpose of carrying on a relevant educational activity. So, if you're making a video, or you get collecting footage that you can then show to someone and educate them, on any matter whatsoever, you're covered by B. C, for the purposes of carrying on commercially or for profit an activity which the person next thing the right could carry on otherwise than commercially or for profit. So that means if you're carrying out an activity that you're getting paid for, but, you, but that is an activity that you could also do and not get paid for, you can do that as well. All right? Okay. So... Subsection 2A above, being on the land for any of the purposes, a reference to going into, 
passing over and remaining on it for any of those purposes and then leaving it. Now, the reason that is there and then leaving it is because you can't then start to build the house and stay there. You can't say that nah, I now live on this land. You have to go on, go on, carry out your recreational purpose and then leave. All right? Any combination of that, going into, passing over or remaining on it. Right? We're not, I'm not going to talk about crossing the land because you, you can cross any land, but we're talking about actually being on the land and, and flying a drone, right? Now, here we go. What What is... It breaks down. It tells you you're, for the purposes of carrying on a relevant educational activity. What is a relevant educational activity? Well, it breaks it down for you here. It says a relevant educational activity is for the purposes of subjects subject three above. That's this one. What is a, real, a recreational purpose? Uh, what is the purpose of carrying on relevant educational activity is furthering the person, that means the drone flyer, if you like, furthering the person's understanding of natural or cultural heritage. So that means if you want to just see some of the Scottish landscape and flying a drone where you cannot see, to get you to get you uh, a visual sight of something that you can't see from where you are standing is is there it's furthering your understanding of natural heritage of Scotland or enabling or assisting other persons to further their understanding. So you you might say, well, I know all about this castle, but my friends don't, so I'm going to fly a drone, take footage, I'm going to, I'm going to educate, educate them about Scotland's cultural heritage. You're allowed to do it, right? Access rates are exercised above and below, right? Above, that means in the air, and below, right? Under the water, if there's a river as well as on the surface of the land. So it covers everything here, right? So, the land in respect of which access rights are exercisable is all land except that specified in or under section 6 below. So there are some uh, exceptions, and that is in section 6. So, let's look at section 6. Right, is everyone still with me? <laughs> are you still following me? Hold on, where are we? Let's get, I need to get to section 6. Let me come back this way. That's chapter two. I need to get to six. Where is six? Two, three, four, six. Here you go. Land over which access rates is not exercised. This is where you're not allowed to go. Now, I've had a good read through this. I've read through the whole thing, right? So I'm not going to get through it all here. You can read that in your laser, but what I am going to point out to you, the only place where you are... Well, there are a few places like schools, like I've said, schools, fire stations, uh, g gardens. Um, this is not flying over. This is actually going onto the land. You can't go onto someone's garden. You can't go into someone's property. You can't. Uh, you can't go into the grounds of a school. You can fly over them. But you can't actually go into them, right? But here's here's the thing that's important when I'm when we're talking about places like the Wallace Monument. Hold on, I'm talking to the camera here, nobody's looking at me, right? When we're talking about places like the Wallace Monument or some castles and estates where you have to pay an admission fee to get in, you are restricted from going on there and flying a drone where you have to go and pay to get onto the site. But this site here, the, 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 the castle, Drum Landrig Castle, Although you have to pay when you get there, it's only for parking. You only have to pay to go into the car park. If you walk along the half-mile road, you, you can go up and fly your drone. If you've got a car with you, you'll have to park it and then you'll pay. But then you can come out of the car park you, you, and then you can fly it. And I'll show you that. I'll show you that now. Right. So it says here, so se chapter 6, section 6, um, I'll get to the point. Right, here we go. You're restricted to which the public access is by... Un right, no, no, that's not... No. Right, here, for a particular particular recreational purpose to which, for not fewer than 90 days in the year ending, members of the public were admitted only on payment. And after this, only only dates here, right? So there you go. So that that's, that's the only restriction on uh, a historic Scotland site if you have to pay admission to get onto the actual site, then you're restricted. But if you're only having to pay 
to park your car, you're not restricted. And that's how it works for the whole of Scotland. I'm going to, I'm going to leave that part there and, and let you read through, click on my link and read through at your leisure. So that's it. That's the act. So with, the, with those two things in mind, the first one, which is the, the Freedom of Information Act that was requested to Historic Environment Scotland to ask what it lay out the section of the law that allows you to restrict their space, they can't, they don't, they don't have any, right? Uh, and if you go into Historic uh, uh, Environment Scotland's website, you'll see, if you will now see a disclaimer that says, uh, words to the effect of, we don't have the right to restrict drones, or something like that. I haven't got, the, I haven't got that, that, that screenshot for you here. Um, but that Freedom of Inf Information Act shows that, yeah, they, they cannot restrict the airspace. Couple that with the Land Reform Scotland Act 2003, which allows us to go anywhere we like. You're, you've now got the freedom to not just, you don't have to walk, you can stop, stand on any land and fly your drone. Right? It's as clear as it could be. This Land Reform Scotland Act 2003 doesn't exist in England or Wales or the North Ireland. Okay? I don't know what the laws are there. There, there probably are restrictions of some kind. Now, the final thing I want to say about this is that people may think, and you may have said this in the comments, I haven't, I'll read the comments in a minute just to check. What about bylaws? What if, there's a, what if the local council has a bylaw to restrict flying? Not in Scotland. <laughs> because a bylaw can only be applied applied to and passed by an Act of Parliament if there is not already a law that pertains to that restriction that the, that the bylaw is asking to put in place. Now, the CAA already have restrictions. You can't fly higher than 120 metres. You can't fly beyond visual line of sight. And... You can't fly over crowds of people. You all know the restrictions. So because those UK laws are already in effect, no local council can introduce a bylaw to counteract that, to put in a restriction there. Ha the only restriction that can be put in there is by the CAA through an Act of Parliament changing, changing the law. Right? So even if somebody tells you there's a bylaw here restricting zones, or if the local council put up a, a sign saying bylaw restricts, uh, 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 no, not unless there has been the bylaw has 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 been given the queen's cons king's consent, and it's an act of parliament now, and it will that'll only happen if the bylaw, if there isn't a law already in place that the bylaw is, is, is seeking to introduce. Okay, everyone following me on this, <laughs> I, I'm not being as clear as I would like to have been, and I'm not being as clear as I, when I, when I was researching this and, and taking my notes and working around out, I was very clear on it. But because I've not been feeling great today, I might be not be coming as, across as clear as one. However, I've put the links in the chat in, in the chat for you, and you can go and read it through yourself. As I said, I'm not a lawyer, but you don't need to be a lawyer because the legislation is 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 quite clear, and you can follow it through. Every time it says, uh, "See subsection three a pertaining to this," you just go and look at it, and then you you relate how does that pertain to this, and it, it is quite easy to follow. Okay.